According to the CDC, the construction industry has the second highest rate of suicide in the United States at 53.3 per 100,000 workers. So for every 100,000 workers, there are 53 of our brothers and sisters who are dealing with things where they feel as if their only way out is by removing themselves from this planet. And that's in the United States alone. Construction takes place all throughout the globe, but sticking to the US, that's 123 suicides every single day. And breaking that down even further, that's one death every 12 minutes. In 2014, a 33-year-old construction worker was found at his work site with fatal injuries consistent with falling from a 150-foot crane tower. He had called in sick a few days earlier, and people last saw him around 10 p.m. the previous evening at the project site. But once the medical examiner studied the body and, and the injuries and everything else that they looked at, they finally classified it as being a suicide. So what makes one of the hardest-bred workers in America so vulnerable? We work in roles that are isolating. Our employment is largely based on the economy. We spend a lot of time away from our families and friends, and it's sometimes difficult to maintain a meaningful relationship with someone, especially such as times like the holiday seasons, where we just celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas, Easter. There, there are a lot of holidays that we end up missing out of from, from away from times from with our families. Some of us experience chronic pain from working so long in the industry. Heat stress due to time constraints, work environment, most of the time poor sleep. We often quite turn to alcohol or mood-altering substances to cope. But the biggest one, perhaps out of all of them, is there is this stigma against mental illness which encourages secrecy and isolation. Men are always expected to hold this deep inside and not express any emotion or any vulnerability, which to be quite honest, I think is most I think is one of the most ridiculous things in the world. I understand why it was the case so many years ago, but things have changed. Now, I'm not talking about campfire, kumbaya, let's all hold hands and talk about our problems nonsense. I'm not talking about that. But if there is something going on with us, uh, we should be able to talk to someone about it. Someone that isn't a professional. It's always good to seek professional help, but we should have friends and family that are there to listen to us. If we just get this stuff that is on our chest out in the world, we will feel so much better. I mean, the list of things that make us more vulnerable can go on and, and on, and sometimes you can't always control these factors, which can contribute to even more further range of behaviors. Some warning signs that you can look out for are if they begin talking about self-harm, self-criticism, or, or self-hatred, withdrawing from others, or self-destructive behavior, decreased productivity, talking about being a burden or extreme mood swings. If they become late a lot or just miss out on a lot of work, why not try figuring out what is going on with them rather than just trying to write them up or fire them? What can we do to help though? Don't ignore it. If you start to get worried about someone, talk to them. They might honestly tell you they're just kidding or they didn't mean it, but let them know that you're concerned. If you think your friend or, or coworker is in crisis, respond quickly. Offer help and support, even if it's an invitation to go grab a beer at the end of work. Sometimes it may be nothing, and, and really there is no way of knowing without asking, but you could potentially stop someone from taking their own life if you at least show them that somebody cares about them. You don't have to be a mental health worker to help someone who is struggling with something. One of the greatest things I continue to experience is how much a project will pull together to help out a family or someone who is in need if someone gets seriously injured either at at home or at work. They'll pass the box around to take up a collection to help them with their bills. If someone gets killed or, or passes away, they'll take up a collection to help the family with the added expenses. We do all of this after something happens to someone. It's time for us to try and do something before it gets to a point where we pass the collection box around. And always, I know you hear this all the time, but if you know of a coworker, a friend, or a family member that talks about hurting themselves or wanting to die or anything that just strikes a chord with you, that makes you feel that they may be in danger, reach out, talk to them, listen to them. And if you yourself are going through some things and consider hurting yourself, call the number on the screen or text the number on the screen. If you don't have anyone else to talk to and you don't want to call one of the numbers, you always got me. Type this link in your internet browser. It'll take you directly to the Safety Spill Facebook Messenger. And it's, it's just me behind the camera. I'm, uh, 
I'm doing all of this, so you're sure to get me. It's time that we start looking out for each other a lot more than what we have normally been. So if you see something, or if you need something, for the love of God, say something.